years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. Yes. Well, now until uh, midnight here in uh, New York City, out of New York City, uh, and it is uh, 10.06 uh, in the evening, uh, Eastern Daylight Time. So wherever you are in the world, adapt to that, and you can tell whether it's live or not. See, if, if it wasn't live, could I do that? No, anyway. Uh, hi, how are you? Good to see you here. Uh, I have uh, was supposed to have a guest here, Albert, but then he went out to dinner with somebody, and uh, now I don't have Albert. All right. Um, wait, somebody somebody wrote me and said, "Are you online tonight? I can't find you." Well, yes, we're online tonight. Uh, you can't find us because you don't have the ability to find us. I, I don't. I don't get it. Okay. Why? Why? I can't find you. Uh, yes, you can find us. You can go over to gabnet.net, and the picture is there. It's running. Okay. It's going. Wait a minute. Let me, let me just uh, do a little refresh here. Yeah, yeah it's, it's there. And uh, uh, the audio, uh, if you click on there, will also work for the, just the audio only. So you just go to gabnet.net. Uh, whatever your name was, Sam Forsyth Danford. He, and, he, and it's funny because he did it using my Facebook Messenger, so if he watches face, looks at Facebook, he can tell. Is this getting too complicated for everybody? <laughs> you know, uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, if I go over to my Facebook, yeah, there it is. Uh, are you online tonight? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to say, yeah, we're online. Okay, there we go. And you can come find us if you want to. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it even has a, a link to GabNet, for crying out loud. You know? So, anyway. What do, I, what do I have to do? What do I have to do to get people to understand what the fuck's going on? I don't understand what the fuck's going on. So anyway, so I was supposed to have a guest tonight in, in Albert, but he might drop in while we're doing this show. Uh, but uh, he's not here for the beginning of it. Neither is Marjorie, because Marjorie's just not doing the show anymore. Uh, she hasn't done it for three weeks now, and uh, she really doesn't like doing it, so I'm not forcing her to do it any longer. If she wants to do it, she can come in and do it. All right? Okay. All right. Uh, she doesn't believe that you people like her, so why don't you go over to her Facebook page and tell her you miss her on the show, okay? And that way, uh, it'll force her to feel that people want her presence here, at least on uh, Friday nights. But anyway, hold on, I just lost a tissue. Can't lose a tissue, might have to blow my nose or clean my glasses, and if I don't have the tissue here, you know, it's a problem. Anyway, um... You know, I had the air conditioner going, and it's pretty loud, but you really don't hear it. Uh, that's the strange part. I listened to the audio from last night's show, and it's barely there. If you listen, it's in the background. And if I turn the mic up, you hear that? You get, then, then you can hear it. But uh, under normal conditions, you can't. So, uh, you know, we're fine. We're fine. Uh, so uh, I don't have Marjorie, and I, I don't have uh, 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 Albert. Uh, so I've just got me. And, um, uh, you know, I might just go to the phones early uh, rather than sit here and talk forever. But I did want to talk about something. I'll tell you today, I was, uh, I was, I've been sick and tired of MSNBC. Uh, and I've told you the reason I'm sick of MSNBC is that it, it, they're just, they're shilling all the time. You know, they, you, you know that they are one-sided. 
Now, I don't mind that. It's on my side, but I also don't like being pandered to, and that's what I feel MSNBC is doing to me. And, uh, you know, it... Uh, so I, I I really was tired of it, and you know I tune in, and it's a whole hour, nothing but Trump bashing and so on, and that's fine. I can't stand Trump, and I bash Trump on this show, but you know I have people who counter that. Um, so I went over, and right next to it is the BBC, BBC America, and I started watching that. And I felt like I was just take, I was taking a cold shower. All of a sudden, I was cleansing myself of this uh, of, of this whole thing that American news is doing lately, which is taking a side. You go over to Fox, and everything that Trump does is wonderful, and they're sucking his dick over there. And you go over to MSNBC, and uh, they're flogging his dick. Uh, and uh, that's all American television news is. And it's not really, you know, I want something, I don't know, unbiased. Uh, that, or either, No news is unbiased because whoever's reporting it does have an opinion. But sometimes they, they are very careful not to, um, not to make a big deal out of it and to, and to, and to kind of subvert their feelings when it comes to, to politics, all right? But not on MSNBC, not on Fox, not on CNN, certainly not there, and not on Newsmax and those other people because they're all right wing. Um, so I went over to the BBC and I started watching the BBC. Now, it was good to watch the BBC today because I got a lot of information about what's going on in England. And one of the big things, as you know, is that Theresa May uh, has. Uh, has, um, uh, is her name Theresa May? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, uh, has has uh, quit. She's le left uh, the, she's no longer, she's going to be quitting being the prime minister. She's going to do it for about another two weeks. Because uh, she's making her own Brexit because she couldn't get a plan together, couldn't get anybody to agree on a plan for Brexit. Now, let's, let's for a moment just talk about Brexit. I mean... This is the British equivalent of the American public voting for Donald Trump. I mean, doing something that is not in your own best interest, okay? So they voted to get out of the European Union. Now, they were kind of, they were in it, but they weren't in, in their heart of hearts because where every other country had gone from the lira or the peseta or the whatever to the euro, uh, England was the only one that maintained its currency, which is the pound. Uh, and the shilling and the pence, okay? Uh, and um, uh, so it, it kind of was, you know, it was part of the European Union, but it, it, it didn't go all in, okay, emotionally. Uh, so the people voted to get out of, out of the UE. UE. Uh, and uh, there, there's nothing wrong with that if you've got a plan on how you're going to do it. But the fact is, there was no plan. There was just a vote to get out of the EU. And then the vote happened, and they had to get out of the EU. And they said, OK, well, the EU said, oh, you get out on this date. And then they couldn't figure out how they were going to get out. And there's something that has to, I don't understand the full breadth and width of the story, but there's something that has to do with Ireland and Ireland's borders. And that is one of the considerations that they weren't able to come to terms with with the EU. And so there was never, and, and the plan that they were presenting to the EU, they couldn't present because the people weren't voting for it. It was just, it was a clusterfuck. And it, it really is their equivalent of America voting for Donald Trump. In other words, it is, you let the public vote on something like that, and you'd like to think the public is wise, but most of the public doesn't even know what they're voting for, and uh, uh, they always vote in their worst best interest. And, and this is, was not in the best interest of the British people. And, um, or at least if it was in the best interest of the British people and they wanted to get out of the EU, they should have had a little more concrete plan how they were going to get out before they got out. And then when they decided maybe this is a bad idea and they said to the EU, well, could we maybe if we want to come back in? The EU went, fuck you. No, 
You can't. Now, a lot of other countries are starting to consider an exit from the EU because it hasn't proved to be the windfall that it was supposed to be. But England being the first country, Britain being the first country to do it, just didn't come into getting out of it with a plan. So it is a mess. So anyway, Theresa May had to, had to resign today. And um, she, uh, as she finished the speech, she started crying. Really? Yeah. That was refreshing to see. Somebody, I mean, who wasn't, uh, who, was, who was the guy we had back when, old orange face, um, who used to cry all the time? Uh, but basically, you never see politicians cry. And maybe that's what's great about having a female politician is she has that ability to show her emotions. Uh, but as she turned around to leave, she gulped, and you could see the emotion welling up in her. And it was really quite a moment. And, of course, the newspapers made a big deal out of this. The ones that don't like her made fun of it. The ones that did said how sad it was. Uh, and what I'm watching, when I'm watching the BBC, is now their whole take on this. And one thing that, that appeared to me as I was watching this is there was no bias in the reporting. In other words, they weren't bashing Theresa May and they weren't bashing the people that might be taking over, like Boris, uh, what's his name, uh, who may be taking over from her. There was no bashing of people. And, they, and they, you know what they didn't have, and I was so happy about this, you know, when you go to these shows, what they do, uh, whether it's uh, whether it's Fox or whether it's uh, MSNBC or whether it's CNN, they open up with a story, and then they have three people who sit around and discuss it. All right, and then they go to the next story, and they have another three people who sit around and discuss that, and then another story, and another three people who come in and discuss that. It says always these three people sitting around talking. I didn't see anybody joining in on this, except for external reporters who were reporting the story. It was the, the anchor, and he was telling the story, and then he was passing it off to the reporter, who then reported the story, and that was very refreshing, you know? It was just nice to see the news reported as news on a, on a landmark news day for British television. Because, I mean, you know, the prime minister doesn't resign every day, okay? Uh, maybe every other day, but not every day. And uh, so it was really quite a, quite a thing to watch, and I enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, and I felt so refreshed after watching it. And then all of a sudden I went back for some reason to MSNBC and I wanted to puke, Okay. Because there's Chuck Todd bashing Trump, and then this guy after him bashing Trump, and it, it just it was it was ridiculous. So uh, uh, that was that was the refreshing moment in my day was the uh, not having to put up with MSNBC or Fox or CNN. And that might I suggest if you really you know, and they did have American stories. I mean, they had the story here about the abortion protests. Okay. Uh, and that's getting to be a big deal because down in Mississippi, a federal court said that uh, the law they passed, they can't pass. It's illegal. And um, uh, so that was one thing that happened here. There is also, this is good, uh, a federal judge has issued a temporary injunction blocking part of Trump's plan to build a wall along the U.S.-Mexico border. Remember, he said that he was, uh, he was declaring it an emergency. And uh, this, this court said, uh, you know, a lot of it can't be used for building the wall. I imagine there's some of it that can be used for building the wall. But really, you know, all they really need is wall maintenance, okay? But... Uh, uh, you know, there were American stories, but when they were reported, they were reported dispassionately, you know. And then they did have a person come in who was, uh, who knew about the whole abortion situation in America. She was an American, and she described what was going on and the nuances of it. But it wasn't, you know, it was reporting. And that's what we need today. We need a, and I hate to say this because I know that Phil will call up and assail me for saying this, but we really need a New York Times on television. Uh, because the New York Times, in spite of what you think, isn't biased. They report what they see. 
you know. And I think they've been, uh, they've been especially nice, considering they, they're constantly assailed by, uh, by Donald Trump. But we need some. We need a news outfit that you know. When I got to tell you, um, you had. Um, gee, I feel like I have to go to the bathroom now. Yeah, take a leak. Well, I'll do that when I get the people here. They'll let me go out and take a leak. Uh, anyway, um, I. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, no, and now I don't know. I can't remember what I was going to say. Uh, but I, you know, I just feel that uh, that we need we need that kind of. Oh, I, I know what it was when um, Ted Turner started CNN. You know the reason he started CNN, because he was watching CBS one night and he saw Dan Rather tell a story, and then he smirked. And he said, "Boy, I'd like to really start a news organization where people don't smirk, where they report the stories, and they don't give kind of a." biased approach to it you know and so he started CNN and the prime rule was you never do things like smirk at a story you never impose yourself upon the story you report the story uh, the other thing was that because CNN was going to be an international organization he didn't ever want uh, stuff that was happening in the United States to be referred to as we okay but report it as though it's just the country that did this today, you know, and that country did this today. But he started CNN with the idea of being completely unbiased. Now, again, some people will say, well, CNN isn't unbiased any longer, but then again, Ted Turner isn't there any longer, and he isn't running it. But when it first started out, that news operation was really wonderful. And, and when he was bothered by CBS, he was bothered by a news operation which was called the Tiffany of the, of, of the television networks. Um, so he was unhappy with something which was maybe the best in the business at the moment, but he didn't like the fact that he saw Dan Rather smirk at a story. He just didn't feel that was proper or that was good or that was right. And... Um, you know, that was, uh, you know. So anyway, um, and, and the other thing that happens with our news here in America is, of course, these guys are, what happened is, is that in the old days, TV news wasn't expected to make money. It wasn't for profit. Uh, what was it for? It was so the networks could say, you know, we've got all these dumb shows like the Beverly Hillbillies and, you can, and Petticoat Junction and My Mother the Car, and you can gripe about the quality of television, but when it comes to news, look at our news network. And they would point to this with, as a point of pride and that they really weren't making a profit off of that. They were doing that because that's what they wanted to do for the American public. And um, so they weren't profit centers, but they are now. And news started making money. And now that it makes money, they've got to keep ginning stuff up to get audience numbers up. In other words, if they aren't ginning up the news, they're not hustling an audience. And that's, that's really what we would like to see happen. Uh, and... and uh, it, 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 you don't want them hustling for viewers. You want them to report the news and hope the viewers will come to them because you can be relied on as being uh, a pinnacle of, of just good, solid reporting. We don't have any of that anymore. Even the guys who, who are supposed to be like the, uh, the stewards of the ship, like Chuck Todd, as an example, over at NBC... Uh, Chuck Todd isn't middle road anymore. I mean, Chuck Todd is opinionated to the nth degree. And he's running basically a news show. Now, the only news operations on those networks that don't have a, um, an agenda uh, are the 630 News, the NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt or over at uh, whoever the guy is at ABC and whoever... Whoever the current flavor of the month is over at CBS, um, these people 
pretty much do not impose their politics on their newscast. In other words, I can, you know I can I can assume, but I can't tell you that uh, Lester Holt is a conservative or a liberal. I don't know. I have no idea. I assume he's black, so I assume probably he skews to the to the left. But I don't know that for sure. Why don't I know that? Because he never ever gives me an indication of where he fits on that. And why can't they take that same attitude? And the same thing is true if you go over to CBS, and the same thing is true if you go over to ABC to their newscast. You can't tell where their politics are. Uh, uh, Walter Cronkite years ago used to say, you know, I was so in the middle that people who d didn't like me, some of them didn't like me because they thought I was conservative, and some of them didn't like me because they thought I was liberal. He said, I never gave anybody an indication of where I stood politically. Turns out, in the end, he was to the left, but he, he, you could never tell that watching Uncle Walter. And he also became a bastion of news because he's where you went every night to kind of, he was the, the word on what was happening, you know? And uh, we used to call him Uncle Walter. As a matter of fact, my friend Abby Hoffman once wrote him and said, um, um, I, think, I think Walter Cronkite at one point tried to wear a sweater on the news. And Abby wrote him and said, don't wear a sweater. You're Uncle Walter. You're, you're the news guy, you know. And, and our news guy doesn't wear sweaters, you know. So anyway, uh, Walter Cronkite was the person, the most, they called him the most trusted man in America. And the reason he was the most trusted man in America is because he, there are only a few times he politically said something. He went to Vietnam, and he saw how terrible it was, and he came back, and he felt it was important to tell his audience how terrible it was and how misguided that war was, okay? Uh, and he often felt guilty about doing that, but he said, I couldn't come back and not do that because what I saw was horrendous, and it was horrible, and it was a war we were losing. And I had, to, you know, I had to let the American public know it. But for the most part, he never gave his opinion on the air. Um, once in a great while, when things were really bad, you know, he would do it. And when he did it, it was effective. You know, uh, the oldest story goes that uh, Lyndon Johnson uh, decided not to run for another term as president. And the reason he didn't, he told somebody, he says, one night I was t I turned on the TV, and there was Walter Cronkite, and Walter said that I was kind of losing my touch with the American people. Uh, and, and, and he said, when Walter Cronkite doesn't like you anymore, it's time to get out. And that's the kind of influence that Walter had, and he had that influence because he didn't use it that often, you know. But so we have this very biased press. I can't watch it. I can't watch MSNBC anymore. It gets it's just getting absolutely horrendous, uh, and and they you know they're ginning up the news and whatever. Anyway, I'm going to go to the phones. Go about a minute early here, uh, because at some point here I may have to punk out for a second and take a leak while you guys talk. But first, let's get a. Uh, um, um, what do you call it, going, a, a citizen panel going here. Uh, and uh, everybody call tonight. Let's see if we can fill up everything here. Uh, because as you can see here, I have a, uh, a blank slate there. So I need to get people calling in, uh, and uh, they will, I'm sure, any moment now, hopefully. Uh, let me see. Let me go back to me full screen till somebody calls um, I, you know sometimes I go a little early like a minute early and and it, it throws people off uh, is he through talking can we can we call now if you look the little green light is lit so we're fine so far all week uh, this um, this system has been working okay here comes uh, here comes uh, 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 Josh Wheeler, and uh, let me see here. I, I, I was getting uh, Charlie Wallace was calling in. 
Uh, are you there, uh, Josh? It, it, show us your picture. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, show us your picture, Josh. We want to see. my volume up here just a moment. Yeah, okay, let me see here. Let me let me get. Okay, you do you have me now? And here's Phil Meyer. Yeah, I got to start putting you guys into slots here. Uh, let okay. me see here. First of all, let me put uh, you on the. Uh, let's put you on the top, Josh. And uh, okay. Uh, wait a minute. And uh, let me see in the third spot. Let's do. Um, let's do. Um, our. Uh, let's do Phil Meyer. Okay, scuba diver, twelve seventy-five. There we go. Okay, there we are. See, that's what a citizen panel looks like, or at least the beginning of a citizen panel looks like. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, gentlemen. Hi. Good evening. Uh, you know, I, I wish a woman would call, then we could say good evening, gentlemen and ladies, or ladies and gentlemen, but, you know, there's a lot of testosterone in this panel. Kids and kitties. Yeah, kids and kitties. Uh, so anyway, uh, how are you all doing tonight? Oh, just fine. Yeah? Yeah, okay. it's nice. It's a nice day in the neighborhood. And it's a nice day in the neighborhood. TGIF. Hmm. What did you say, Charlie? The TGIF. TGIF. Yeah. Yeah, I got to work tomorrow. Why do you have to work tomorrow? I have a customer that needs to see me, and that's the only day off they have. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. And then yeah. he buys lots of rug, does he? Uh, yeah. This one hopefully buys lots of wood floor. Oh, but, wood floor. Uh, wood floor. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, ever, do, you, do you ever get tired of that business? You don't sound like you get tired of it. Nah, I like it. You know, there are certain things, like you've been doing radio for, what, 60 years? And <clears throat> you wake up in the morning and you're, you're a radio person, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I feel comfortable and at home in the floor covering business. You know, it just feels like that uh, was my destiny as a child. Mm -hmm. And it, it just feels like that's what's uh, what makes me feel comfortable. And also, I like the fact that I'm good at what I do and people are happy with what I provide. Why, why do you say it was your destiny? Because your father did it? Yeah. You know, uh, it, you know, I lost my father. I was very young. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he uh, at first I rebelled. I, you know, I, I didn't want to go into the same business or the same type of business. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I, but I kept returning to it and, uh, it, it became something that it's like, it's like fiber runs through my veins. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, I kind of, I think I went and I went into show business because, uh, my father was a musician and he was mm -hmm. in show business and I, I knew, I knew I wanted to be in show business from, uh, from uh, four years of age. Yeah, I knew I wanted to be in radio. Actually, that was this. That was the even stranger part. Oh, we've been joined by Kevin. Let me just give him a little, uh, a little slot uh, hog, here. Uh, oh, yeah, hog rider. Okay, hog rider, and uh, we uh, we go uh, there. And oops, we have him in two of the slots. I've got to get rid of him in one of the slots. Um, <laughs> that's because he was in the other slot last night. So. Just, you know, double Kevin for your money. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I just got rid of Kevin. <laughs> you don't want that. Okay. <laughs> there, there we go. And uh, let me see here. If I can go six and I go... He's four, he's five. Uh, there we go. Okay. I got yeah. it now. I got you it know, now. There we go. Okay. I, I would rather have my father been a very wealthy investor, uh, but uh, that's that wasn't the case, and so I just followed in his footsteps. Well, my my father was uh, was a musician, and when I was a kid, my mother remembers me on a bus mm -hmm. uh, going up to Telegraph, going up Telegraph Hill. Yeah. And we were on the bus, and I had a salt shaker, and I was talking into it like I was doing a radio show, and I was four <laughs> years old at the time. Yeah. So I think I've been a radio since then. <laughs> yeah, well, that was your calling. And, uh, you know, for me, it was what I felt at home with. You know, I, I felt that it was like family. And uh, so I, I continued to do it. Yeah, like if, uh, if, uh, if um, uh, 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 our friend uh, Tony uh, ever decides to have children, they can all grow up to be people who make hat boxes. 
<laughs> I, I don't think Tony's ever had a date, let alone children. Oh, don't stop that. <laughs> stop that. <laughs> All right. I'm sure uh, you're correct, but, you know. <laughs> okay. You know, I mean, some people. I mean, he's smarter than than all of us. I mean, your divorces didn't cost you; mine cost me everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. How much did they cost you? Well, uh, you had uh, about sixty grand in attorney's fees, mm -hmm. uh, a house that's worth about a million six right now, that was seventy thousand dollars away from being paid off. Mm -hmm. uh, my two kids don't talk to me. No, Bare uh, one barely, you know. But the other one, uh, nothing. And uh, so, you know, it, it cost me 23 years of marriage that is kind of doesn't count, mm -hmm. you know. I'm calling Ray Renati back because uh, for some reason he didn't grab on. There we go. Now we're, now we're okay. There's Ray. Hey. Hello. Okay. I had to call you back. You didn't uh, automatically uh, come in, which is kind of interesting. Yeah. That's because he was probably on his phone the other day, and now he's on a laptop. Oh, uh, really? No, I was on the laptop last time. Really? Oh, was I on my phone? Oh, maybe I was. I think you were walking around. Yeah. I see. Yeah, oh. that's right. Okay, well, I don't know. It has something to do with having called once before, and probably because you're calling on a different uh, device. Yeah, uh, exactly. it, It's causing that. Uh, but anyway, so we called you back, and there you are. See, wearing your, your... I'm wearing the same color shirt you are tonight. That's right. Orange oh. shirt. Yeah. Mm. Orange man. This is Care Driver. Yeah. Uh, did did like any of you? Did, kids. Yeah. Did you, did any of you take on your father's kind of profession or something that they did? I did. You yeah. did. Yeah. What was your father? Well, he ended up being a, a sales in high tech. And yeah. That's what I ended up doing. Oh really? Oh. Okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to say he was an actor. No. <laughs> no, I got out of it. I got out of that 20 years ago, but I ended up. Uh, that's what I was doing for a long time. Yeah, yeah. But why did you get out of it? Because the bottom uh, fell out of the it? The company I was with got sold to E-Trade, and uh, I was so I, I was VP of sales, and I got pushed out of the company through a whole bunch of dirty tricks, and I was so sick of it, I just didn't want to go back. Yeah. And, then, yeah. and I just decided to do the acting. That was over 20 years ago. Okay. I was already doing that, but then I just, that's all. Now, I, have you, have you, uh, do, do you make your living as an actor? Uh, no, no, I don't make enough to make a living. My wife uh, has her own business. Okay. All right. Yeah. You're kind of like me, you're a pimp. And, yeah, uh, I mean, you know, it's like if I'm working, it, I get paid like a minimum wage on the contract, you know? The mm -hmm. theater, yeah, and there's there's no SAG after up here anymore. I'm in the in those unions, but there's nothing going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You really, guys, you're not pimps. You're more like Mac daddies. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, I I don't know. I feel I feel okay. guilty that I'm not working. You know, that I'm not bringing home an income. I mean, especially I have, after sixty me or seventy that's, years. I mean, yeah, I am bring, I am bringing home I I'm bringing home about three thousand dollars a month in Social Security and SAG after a pension. It's not know. the money. It's the uh, you know, it's the satisfaction of of creating and doing something. Well, I, I don't think I, do, I don't think I, I'll I do, ever do, stop working. I do. I, I can't afford. Yeah, but to I do work. this. You know, this should satisfy me, shouldn't? Uh, yeah, but for some reason, because you're not being paid, and that's a very important part, that you have to get the feedback of pay for the you work that you do. You know something, though? Today, if I worked at a radio station today, I would be paid so badly that it'd be like not getting paid at all. It, it, it would piss sometimes you off. It, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't matter, but uh, if you ever read Emerson's essays, there's one on compensation. And uh, it really goes to the heart mm -hmm. of why mankind uh, has to has to work and be rewarded for their work. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, well, I'm rewarded just by the 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 thrill this gives me every night. Yeah, just knowing I'm here to bust your chops. Just knowing, <laughs> just knowing that I can talk to you every night, Phil. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, no, but I, uh, I, you know, I just, I knew from a young age what I wanted to do. There was no, nothing else. I mean, there were certain things, you know, that you, when you're a kid, you say, I want to do. And I, one of the things I wanted to be was an astronaut. 
before there was any such thing as an astronaut. I know that sounds strange, but there wasn't a space program or anything, but I knew that I wanted to go into space. Did you have those reoccurring dreams where you felt as if you could fly no, when you were a kid? No, no, no. I did. Well, and everybody's had flying dreams. That, that's, yeah. you know. Anybody not had a flying dream here? See? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. I just want to say to Phil, I agree with you about the compensation part. I think the difference is when, like, you're in entertainment, sometimes you can forego some of the actual compensation because uh, you, you're fulfilling some artistic need and you're also, like, you know, you're getting immediate gratification from an audience. Or Would whatever. you get more gratification even if you were sp paid a small, small stipend for your, uh, for your work? Oh, I'm, always, uh, I'm in the union. That's why I joined no, the no, union. I understand. But have yeah. you, you've shot photography for nothing. I know I have. And, right. Uh, I did it, it with and you. And when I get paid. And <laughs> yeah. when I get yeah. paid. And, no, no, but you know, with you, Phil, and I hate to say this, but I with you, always get paid with you, when I shoot. With I you photography is what is called a hobby, and everybody should have hobbies. Well, I shoot weddings also. No, but I like the, to shoot I, I, in spite of that, I most, most of what you're doing is as a hobby. Uh, you most, know. yeah, but when it's you also get to perfect my... It's, uh, the hobby stuff is there to uh, fulfill me from a creative standpoint, but it also uh, gives me uh, the practice I need. Like, for to instance, my I'm craft. willing to admit that Gabnet is a hobby. Yeah, but I. You but, know, it's gone. But, I, but you want it to be great, you want it to be good. My photography is the same thing. Mm -hmm. If I all of a sudden use the wrong settings and mm -hmm. uh, ended up with too much grain in my picture, I'm pissed. You know, and I, I do things to. Uh, no, that, uh, to, that's, to fine. My, that's fine. But what class. I'm saying is that basically you have a profession, and this is a a hobby which occasionally, you know, it's always nice when your hobbies can make you money. Right. Okay, uh, uh, that's the best kind of job to have is when you're you're making your living doing what you would do as a hobby. Does that do make you sense? Think talk, you think talk show hosts don't make a lot of money? You should talk to some photographers and find out. Oh, how little, I'm, yeah. you can't. I'm sure. Be a photographer uh, for you the know, most I, part. I don't know who gets paid anymore. Okay, at least in entertainment. All right, because I, in radio, I don't know anybody that's making money in radio. You know, I mean, they're getting it. They're getting you know some kind of money, but they're not getting a lot. Yeah. You know, Ray's in good shape, but he still has his hand up. Yes, Ray. <laughs> I just wanted to say, like, if I get. Right now, if I get two photography jobs a month, I'm in heaven, you know. Um, I there's there's one woman in the Bay Area that does almost all I'd say 80 percent of the headshots for all the actors, and she makes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But it's like, like Phil said, I, and Alex said, most people just don't get paid anymore. And if you do anything creative, yeah. you hardly make anything. I, what I do with <laughs> weddings is uh, I volunteer in uh, uh, there's some churches in Concord. And I will shoot their wedding for whatever they want to pay or nothing because I want people to have a record of that occasion. I also like to, to be able to shoot family members that may not be around much longer. So therefore, this might be the only s sort of professional pictures that they have of those family members. So for me, it, it's cathartic. I like doing it and I, and I like the pressure of shooting a wedding because most people when they shoot weddings they, they they're very um, they're stressed out well I'm not uh, to me it was like doing cop work I never got stressed while I was doing cop work and I and I have a mission and a plan when I shoot the weddings and uh, so yeah, well, you know, here, 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 some people pay me some people don't it's anybody they want. anybody else here have hobbies Charlie you have a hobby I guess my umpiring was my hobby for a long time yeah you don't do that anymore though right no why did you stop doing it? Um, well, health reasons, because of my diabetes and uh, problems with my toes and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, do you do anything as a hobby? Okay, he talks to you. I'm bowling. I'm <laughs> you... bowling every day now. Oh, bowling? Okay. You know, that, 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 that qualifies. How about you, Kevin? You got a hobby? Uh, I'm trying to establish a hobby. Mm -hmm. I'm working on my truck. Mm -hmm. You know, motorcycle. Yeah, motorcycle. I, I'm kind of in between a bunch of stuff ever since I got laid off. You yeah. know, trying to do something. I, I get, just got onto an oversight committee, so I'll be doing that. 
Yeah, you don't get paid for you, you get paid for that, right? No, I don't get paid. Okay, for that. so that you could say that's a hobby. Yeah, you it's know. gonna be. <laughs> it's gonna be. Yeah. Gonna be watching politicians spend money. Well, <laughs> you don't know where that can lead, though. You know, there, yeah. there are, yeah. you know, every every path that you follow has you know side roads that you you know you may end up taking. Yeah. yeah. Um. You know. I mean. I um. um I would say you admit, that I've I've been lost ever since I got la- laid off. I've been lost. You know, not knowing what the hell to do. Where'd you yeah, get laid I off from? Forty-one years and never stopped. Just and then trucking. all of a sudden, I'm doing nothing. You know. And you got yeah, laid. That happened to me when when I got axed like that. Twenty. I mean, that was brutal. That was like the hardest thing of my life. Oh my God! It's it's insane. It still yeah. it still haunts me. Yeah. yeah, it still haunts me. I mean, oh. I you know, I think it was a full th- two years. Yeah, that's why. That's one of the reasons I became self-employed. Because when I was a rep back in the in the 70s, repping furniture, uh, I found that the lines that paid didn't ship. The ones that shipped didn't pay. And the ones that shipped and paid hired their sons to cover this territory after you pioneer it. So <laughs> I, I found that I was better off just being self-employed. You know, yeah. the only person that could fire me is the customer and myself. Yeah, so. but you could. You could go belly up. Yeah, but you that know. doesn't mean I can't start again. But at least he's not betrayed. You know, I think when you work for these yeah. companies and you give them your heart and your soul for years and years, and all of a sudden they screw you over, it just does something to you. Well, the, thing, you know, well, me, the, thing, just, the thing that bothered me the most about Sirius XM was, to this day, I don't know why. You know? Exactly. I have yeah. no idea why. And, and that is the... the uh, that, that was selfish because they were trying not to have liability. I would say that had something to do with it. I think that it, it, it they kept saying it doesn't have anything to do with you. It's not your fault. You yeah. Know? Which well, leads I mean, me to believe it was some executive who wanted me out of there or something like that, something really cheesy. But I never I never got an explanation. You know, nobody Alex, said in your business, haven't you been fired like a fifty million dollars? Yeah, times? but I've known every time why. Well, you know, you've known what they wanted to tell this. you. Well, I mean, I, usually it wasn't a matter of being fired. It was a matter that uh, my ratings went down or something like that. Yeah. And it was, you could see it coming, you yeah. know? Well, Sirius doesn't have ratings, so, you you know, you're blindsided. No, no I, you know. 90% of the time, it's the almighty dollar. Well, uh, people have said to this day, yeah. and I can't imagine, you know, I, from what I was getting paid, that this would be a factor. But they said that I was probably making more money than they wanted to pay. You right. Know? But they turned yeah, around they and paid somebody some in there religious for guy. No, they paid some other guy money. Right. A million bucks. No, no, right. no, no. The no, religious no. They, guy. But he didn't replace me. Oh. He didn't replace me. Oh, Osteen? Yeah. He Different didn't replace market. me. No. Oh. Where, the guy who replaced me, I hear, was getting maybe 35000 a year. You know? Yeah. And and it, you had Albert was the highest paid producer outside of Howard Stern's producer in the building, so between the two of us, they had what they considered an expensive show. Yep. You know, yeah. and uh, 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 but I don't know that that was the reason. I have no idea. Was I, there advertising on your? But, well, uh, I sus- on your the thing? guy the guy that that replaced me was with uh, Media Matters, oh. and they had they had it out for me. Yeah. And I think that that had something to do with it, okay? And I think that, um, I, I think, in fact, that they maybe weren't even paying his salary, that Media Matters may have been paying his salary. Because whenever they can do that over at Sirius, they do that as well. If they can get some company to pay the freight, then they'll do it. And that's why I'm surprised that they paid Joel Osteen uh, even penny one. Because Joel Osteen would have paid money to be on Sirius. That's yeah. what I don't get. That's stupid business. You know. How many? Maybe he has a lot of followers. And you're paying a guy, what, what did you say he was getting paid? A million a year? I thought it was a million. I, I, you, I don't think it's that, that high. But, that but the, let's face it. Whatever they're paying him, they're paying him to hustle money. <laughs> you yeah. know. Well, did they get yeah. a cut? <laughs> no. No. They just need content. I, I tell you... Uh, I went through, I don't know, I, I got uh, serious for a year now. Uh, I will have it for a year. And uh, so I went through the channels, and there isn't shit there. 
you know, even the 60s on 6 is no good anymore. You know, uh, you know uh, I, the, there's very little Cousin Brucey. Uh, you that, want, uh, guy, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's, there, to me, even a little Cousin Brucey is too much Cousin Brucey. Yeah, well, it kind of reminds you when you were a kid, you know. But, you know, he's, he's, he's turned into very old. I mean, he's been his voice. You, you've got your chops. He does not have his chops. Yeah, anymore. but it's amazing. It's amazing that his hairline started to recede terribly, and, <laughs> and now, mysteriously, he's grown hair back. Yeah. Okay? Uh, uh, which I think is just amazing. I just find that uh, 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 amazing to me. This, the, uh, hey, Alex, the same thing happened to me. My hairline went away. I yeah. was bald. Yeah. You know, I had yep. this stuff oh, wait over a minute. here. That's not who I am. And now he transplanted it and put it up there? I'm trying to get Tony in here. And I have a yeah. picture of Josh. Did you here. have a hair plant? I want though? Tony. There's yeah. Tony. Okay. Uh, all righty. Dr. Rosanelli. Uh, all righty. Oh. Wait a minute. Tony, where are you? Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I don't even know who Cousin Brucey is. Oh, oh there York, you are, there Tony. There was a radio station, okay. AM station there we called go. WABC there's, 77. There's Tony. Yeah. And Cousin Brucey was one of the jocks from that station. Now, I, I was more loyal to WMCA, which is the station that Alex was on, mm -hmm. oh, and, okay. uh, and, and a number of their jocks. But their station went away uh, musically uh, before WABC. And, yeah, we went, uh, uh, and we, WABC had the strongest signal. We went all talk. Yeah. Oh, that that, was, that was, my, that was another firing that was really devastating to me because mm -hmm. I uh, the only reason they got rid of me supposedly was because they took on the Yankees mm -hmm. and I now was on it uh, when did I go on I was on at a certain time where they felt the Yankees would be preempting me half the year I don't know I didn't listen to you on WMCA yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway I went over to WPLJ and I lasted yeah. there for five years which was longer than the two years that I lasted at WMCA uh, but I kind of looked, believe it or not, I, I looked at going to WPLJ as a step downward for me in this respect, is that I always took great pride in the fact, everybody used to say to me when I was on WMCA, why don't you go to uh, WBAI or why don't you go to some FM station? Because FM, was the, doesn't pay. because FM was the big thing happening at that time. It was coming up, you know. And if you were hip, you were on FM. And I was doing the same kind of hip show, but I was doing it on AM. And I said, I like doing it on AM because I would rather take what I'm doing where it's needed than where it already is. You know what I'm saying? In other words, I felt that I was bringing something to the AM dial that they didn't have which was an FM-style program. Did they pay the jocks at WBAI? I know they didn't oh, pay no, the Oh, no, not WBAI. That was, that was Pacifica Foundation, and that was non-profit. Yeah, I was non -profit. Non -profit. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I, I was happy, you know, doing what I, you know, uh, being on an AM station, because I said, there, I'm, I'm, I'm doing something significant. If I go to the FM station, it's going to be too, too goddamn easy for me, you know? Uh, here comes. I've got to go get myself another um, thing here because we got to got to get. Uh, uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Jeff Stein in the number eight position. Where is Jeff? I don't have him up. Oh, there he is. There we go. All righty. Okay. Let me see here. Jeff. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I'm trying to. I'm trying to. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There's there's you. And uh, then Jeff would be here. Is this Jeff? Yeah, this is Jeff. Are you there, Jeff? Oh, no, we lost Jeff. Oh, okay. Well, let me call Jeff back. Um, because he probably won't try us again, so I'll just uh, call him back. And uh, here, here we go with Jeff and add. And it's calling him, and let's see if he picks up. But I, uh, there we go. Uh, now he's calling. Okay, are you there, Jeff? All right, you might have lost me. <laughs> Jeff? No, I didn't lose you. Did I lose you? Are you frozen? Oh, boy. What, 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 what's happening here? Uh, let me try it again. Let me try this again. No? Uh, Jeff. Jeff, are you there, Jeff? No. No. 
Uh, Jeff, let me see here. Jeff right. Stein. Are you there? Uh, are you there, Phil? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. I froze for a second. Yeah, well, okay. Whatever. <laughs> Jeff uh, Stein. Yeah. Oh, I don't know why Jeff uh, didn't pick up, but I'll try him again. Uh, well, well, where's Stein Zeller? I don't have it. Oh, let me see here. No. Uh, well, I don't see Jeff Stein on my list. That's that's interesting. Oh, well. Jeff, try calling again, you know, and we'll try and put you in here, you know. Anyway, I, I don't want to take up too much time with that, but Jeff, uh, give us a call. I don't know why. Oh, there we, there, there's Jeff Stein. Now let me call him. Let's see what happened. Oh, here he is. He's calling me now. Okay, Jeff, are you there? Are you there, Jeff? Yes. There he is, yes. finally. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, hi, Jeff. Hello, everybody. Okay, Jeff. Hello. Jeff, you got a hobby? My hobby? Eh, you know, I, I, we kind of have a camera club, but I do almost l very little of it. Really? Yeah, but I also go sailing. That's kind of a... Thing, but it's only during the season. So. Well, my hobby, my during hobby. During the winter, it's zero. Yeah. My hobby for years was video, and shooting videos, and when I went on vacation, and then turning them into little productions and things like that. You know. Uh, and then that kind of, uh, yeah. like that turned into a job actually when I came back <laughs> to New York and worked for my friend Steve Gruberg editing video for him. Uh, so that was a hobby that turned into into work. So you know, whatever. Uh, uh, Jeff, I mean, not Jeff, but Josh. Uh, do you do you have a hobby, or do uh, do you have any hobby at all? Well, I mean, yeah, I have some things I do, obviously, outside of work. Uh, uh, just pure hobby wise. I mean, you know, I really enjoy sports. You know, I I watch the games every night and weekends. Uh, I play I play a lot of golf. And, uh, you know, I've, uh, I've worked kind of a second job for about a decade, really, as, uh, you know, on the grounds crew at, a, at a, like, a high-end public golf course. I know I mentioned that before. So I've kind of got, like, a unofficial degree in agronomy, so to speak, you know, because my, my brother-in-law has been a golf course superintendent for, you know, pretty much all his life, you know, since he started working. And I uh, trained under him for a long time. You know, I have a... Uh, a applicator's license, you know, to spray chemicals. You know, I mean, I, you know, I got a first class yard and everything because I know how to take care of it. And I've done all the cultural practices that are done, you know, so uh, that's kind of a second job, but it's well, uh, well, one of those yeah, jobs but, that but, if but, I could make a lot of money that, like, I make where I work doing it, you know, it, it would be perfect. But I kind of started in it too late to switch careers, you know, but that's kind of an unofficial. You know, so do you I consider? Do you kind of, kind of consider it a hobby then? Yeah, you could say that because when I, that's kind of like a job that I do that, you know, I don't mind doing mm -hmm. it. You know, like when I drive mm -hmm. around and spray, you know, tees, greens, fairways, stuff like that. It's I like it. You know, I, mm -hmm. I don't mind. You know, mixing the chemicals and going out and spraying, and it's kind of nice because you know you're by yourself. You don't really have to deal with anybody. Uh, Put the headphones on. I can listen to you know podcast, you know your show, or if I missed it, or you know live programming on Sirius. Sometimes I listen to music. You know, I mean, you, you just kind of, you know, it's enjoyable. You know, you're outside. You know, when the weather's nice, it's not. You know, it's. it's I lost. Can be kind of fun. You know, as compared to my other job, which I consider more of a burden. You know. What's your problem, Phil? I lost your picture. You lost my picture. Well, I have no idea there why. There you are. You're yeah, back. Yeah, there. well, uh, you know, deal with it. Uh, please, people, deal with your problems yourself. Don't bring them up here. It only slows the show down. All right. Yeah, well. yeah. Yes, yes, uh, uh, Jeff's got his hand up. Jeff? Yeah. The other thing that I started doing is cooking Spanish food. Oh, really? It's, you know, it's kind of like uh, a little chef. Is that oh. like paella and things like that? Yeah. 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 That's cool. That's well, I mean, cool. 
the Mexicans are coming, so he's just getting ready. Yeah, he's just getting ready. <laughs> uh, 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 let me see here. Oh, Tony. Now, Tony, I put th that. It's an interesting question to ask you. I imagine uh, your hobby is taxidermy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I still do that to mothers. Uh, <laughs> just, I actually just put the cream on. Huh? Oh, you God. what? Yeah. Uh, wait, you wait, 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 wait a minute. Soft. Hold on a second. <laughs> tell, <laughs> tell me about this, Tony. You just put the cream on? Oh, God. I swear to God. You know what it is? She can't see because she's legally blind. Thank God, because it's going to work in my favor. I don't mean it in a bad sense. But <laughs> so all of a sudden, she's beginning like she scratches. So she got like a rash. So the dermatologist <laughs> gave her like a cream. So I had, to, I had to take the socks off and do the feet like it's Mary Magdalene. <laughs> you can't write this. I laugh when I do this because I think of you laughing and it's true. No, I just, I just, you know, it's, it, it, you're, you're, my you're, life is you're, 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 there's no question in my mind. You're Norman Bates personified for crying out loud. Yeah, you could drop in the room. Just think, no matter how tough you think your life is, you could be Tony. Mother, mother, oh my <laughs> God, mother. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh uh, you yeah. know, when I think of hobbies, like my hobby is, is scuba diving. I make you know? a laugh. <laughs> yeah. Don't die on me, I tell her. <laughs> Don't die on me. Please, I didn't even get a check yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm gonna stop. And, and don't di the please don't di don't die while I'm putting on the cream. It's time <laughs> you for your cream. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what she says? Can you, can you take the whites down? I says, Ma, there's nothing in the basket yet. We got full <laughs> 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 Oh, you, you can't even make it. Okay. I, I laugh. Do you know I laugh to myself sometimes? Really? <laughs> you can you can stop that now, Phil, because I don't want to play too that much wasn't of me. it. That oh, was, was? Me. That was me. Who, who was it? Oh, it was oh, you. No, okay. Was, don't yeah, play too it's, much it's, of it, otherwise, you know, they'll they'll yeah. flag me. I turned it off. <laughs> you know. My sister called me up and she makes fun. She says, "What is she got you doing now?" I says, "Tomorrow's whites." <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow's whites. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh, my. Oh my God, it's a comedy here. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all right, though. At least I can laugh about it. Yeah, yeah. well, you know. That I'll jump out the window. Uh, hey, they let you out of the basement. Back up. Back up. Tony? Is that, is that, is that, is that, you know, I, I would ask Tony, I would ask Tony a very, how could I call it, indelicate question about how would you feel when your mother died, but the answer I suppose I would get is I'd feel out of work. <laughs> yeah. You're right. <laughs> She didn't collect unemployment. <laughs> she better last thirty-two weeks. <laughs> Was it hard to get the blood out of the curtains? Nothing <laughs> happened. What happened? She hears me laughing. Hold on. Hold on a second. I can't even talk. <laughs> you know, I, oh, I was man. just amazed that they let him oh, out of the basement. Oh man, that's amazing. Isn't it? Oh, geez, Almighty! Let me see here. That's oh, awesome. Uh, that's Tony. Let me see. I gotta get Tony a little spot here. Hold on, just a moment, folks, while I get Tony in. Uh, let me see here. He. Oh, Darth Pat. There she he heard is. Me, she heard me laughing. Uh, well, uh, 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 Tony, I don't want you to move. You yeah. can't have any of that. You are kind of watching. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tomorrow's yeah. oatmeal. Yeah. Anyway, we've been joined by uh, by Patrick. Hello, Patrick. Hi. Now, here's what I want to know from you. Yeah. Your hobby. My what? Hobby. My hobby is collecting Star Wars. Oh, really? Okay. Oh, yeah. Now, you've never shown us any of your Star Wars collection. It, it's on my Facebook page. Yeah, Facebook. It's not mine on Facebook. I have an album, so. What would you say is the most precious Star Wars item you own? Most precious or most valuable? Both. Oh. Um, most valuable is a coin that I have. Um, it goes for around fifteen hundred dollars. And then um, I would say the most precious is probably my Boba Fett action figure I had when I was a kid. Okay, so that has some emotional value to it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, you've been a Star Wars fan ever since you were a kid. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. 
I, I was born in 75. The movie came out in 77. Um, I didn't start playing with anything maybe till 79 before The Empire Strikes Back came out in 1980. But, uh, yeah, so I'd say about four or five years old, I started playing and I'm a fan ever since. So. Wow. What is it that attracted you to Star Wars? You know, what, 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 how, how did you identify? Um, you know, the whole space thing. Um, it, it was action, adventure, you know, it, um, and I mean, I was into King Kong and, and Godzilla and all of those when I was a kid. And this was just another thing. Um, and neither of my parents, or I can't think of any family member that liked Star Trek. So mm -hmm. I probably would have gotten hooked on that if it had been on the television. Yeah. But uh, that was never the case. So when I saw, I assume the trailers on television for The Empire Strikes Back, it. Uh, <laughs> You know, it, it got me as well as I'm sure there was influence from kids at school as to how cool this was or, you know, so. It's amazing. You're 20 some odd years younger than me, but the things I played with were like bicycles. Uh, uh, I like cars and I had a Sandy Andy, which was uh, this little machine. Was, you cranked it and the it picked up sand, took it to the top of the conveyor belt and then dumped it so you could pick it up again. Yeah. And, uh, and then... Uh, Oh, I had a Mr. Machine. Uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Machine was this little black robot uh, that actually worked with batteries, and that that was pretty cool. But uh, you know, the things that I played with were well, not well, television oriented. You know what I'll, I played with? Something I won. I, yeah. I went to a uh, thing, a a show, a, a, a Hopalong Cassidy thing. Oh. Remember Hopalong Cassidy? Oh yeah. William Boyd. Uh, uh, and and uh, I won a, a two gun holster set. Mm. Yeah. yeah. So I w I was walking around with my uh, holster with the two guns in it. Imagine me, huh? I was with the yeah. NRA before you were. <laughs> and I was the only one like that did Lionel trains, huh? Oh, oh, I had Lionel, Lionel trains. I, you know, I nice. always wanted a train set, but somehow right. my parents never got around to getting me one. Um, My father got one because it fell off the back of a truck uh, in the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I had kids. I, I had kids in my neighborhood because I was, I was raised in, uh, in um, uh, North Beach, which was an Italian neighborhood, okay? And I was... Uh, um, I was... Uh, um, uh, what's, what am I trying to say here? I w uh, so I was... Uh, with these kids, or they were all Catholic in the neighborhood, and so Christmas time, they all had the Christmas tree and everything. And going around the Christmas tree was the train set. Yeah, yeah we, we had one like And that, some yeah. of them were elaborate, and some of them weren't. You know, my grandmother had one, Alex. My mother's mother, I remember that. But all I knew is the maintenance on them was difficult because all of a sudden they'd stop working, and somebody had to go figure out where the track had separated from the thing. Yeah. You know. Get a you know, Don't all of that, but Ray, uh, Ray I, I could see how, wondering. yes, yes, Ray. Where, where'd you go to high school? In, Sac in San Francisco? Me? Yeah. I, I went to Drake went Marin. I went to Drake High School in Marin. Oh, okay. Yeah. So Francis Drake High School. Oh, yes. You st I remember, yeah, you said yeah. that before. Yeah, yeah. Near yeah. Kentfield, I think. It's still there. Yeah. I know. You know, they didn't tear it down and build some new school to replace it. So, I mean, I was there. I went there. I was the second class at Sir Francis Drake in 1957. I graduated. So I started going there in, like, 56. I thought you were a pretty first-class kind of guy. Uh, the first, <laughs> cl first class to graduate was 56. Really? I yeah. went there as a freshman. but mm -hmm. uh, So it was two years before that. So it opened up in, what, 53? Wow. So and it's still there. So that's sixty-five years. Yeah. Yeah, and I went by it a while back, and it's still the same old fucking school. Yeah. You know, they're probably kids getting asbestos poisoning or something out of that place. You know. <laughs> There's probably some people from your class that are still trying to graduate. Yeah, yeah that too. <laughs> that too. You know, but I mean, um, yeah. Wow. Well, we have a lot of people with their little talents and their little hobbies and 
Hey, what, you know, I, I used to collect baseball cards. And of course, that'll give, give that'll give. Oh yeah. I, I, bet. I have I have hundreds and hundreds of baseball cards, and some of them are worth money. Mm. I have like a um, Nolan Ryan's rookie card. Mm. Um, yeah, I got Tony salivating. You know, you know what I have. <laughs> you know, you know what I have. What I have is a card very few people have. Uh, I have a Roy Hobbs. Whoa. Oh, from the movie? Yeah. Yeah. That well, was a good movie. No, but this was one of the, in the movie. They yeah. There's a scene where they're showing him getting popular in whatever, in some magazines or whatever, and then they're rolling off on a press some Roy Hobbs baseball cards. <laughs> and I got one of those. That's nice. Yeah, yeah. I still have it in the storage, my Roy Hobbs. Uh, my dad has a, a, a Babe Ruth signed baseball. Um, his father had Babe Ruth sign it after a game once. Yeah. And it's and we had it uh, price. It's and it has all his. It has Babe Ruth's vomit on it too. So yeah, it's <laughs> worth over twenty thousand dollars. Wow. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Son of a bitch. Yeah, it's sitting in my parents' house in a case. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well. Now, does the signature fade after all those years? No, it hasn't. It hasn't. Oh. I think it's because they keep it covered. And well, they had my dad had two of them, and the other one he played with it, and then lost it when he was a kid. Well, you know something. <laughs> Somebody said to me that if you really want to be smart about things, what you should do is go out, and no matter what you buy, buy two of them, play with one of them, and put the other one away. Now, I'll tell you a guy in this crowd here who's been smart that way, and smarter than a lot of you would think, is Tony. Yeah, Alex, I bought multiples of a lot all the time. You bought a hundred copies of the first issue of Spawn, right? What, did we just what lose him? He we, just got, that, you just we, shocked him. Off the we, yeah. we just lost him. What timing. Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah, right as I was bringing that up. Yeah, he, he sent me a Trump comic, and uh, he said to me, he, and I think he bought a ton of those too. And he said I, he just sold one on eBay for forty bucks. What? Yeah, huh? yeah. I did. yeah. I got lucky with the form. Oh, here, I, I, here we go. He's I used to buy, I used to buy multiples of a lot of things when I really liked it, and I always did that. Yeah. But when Image Comics came out, I said, you know what? So I want to buy it. The guy says, I can get you 100 copies for that. I said, well, how much? He says, I can do like 90 cents a book. I said, all right. You know what? As long as you don't give them to the store. He didn't even send them to the store. He no. just sent them right but, but to Tony, me. But Tony, Tony, the Spawns, you bought 100 of those? Yeah. Yeah, you bought 100 I, copies of Spawn. Wait a minute. How much yeah. does a single copy of Spawn go for now? I mean, a raw comic, and mine's were all near mint, but a raw comic, not graded, I would say it's about 30 bucks. Not graded, but I have graded books that are nine eights, that are probably worth about two fifty a book. For Spawn? Yeah, I could bring so, them up. I have so you have a hundred copies of Spawn. Oh, yeah. I kid you not. At two fifty a pop? Well, I have graded books CGC nine eights that I can get two fifty. That I've already gotten two fifty easy. How many you got of those? I probably have twenty graded minimum. I oh, probably lose lost count. I'd have to go look because I have a lot of copies, and I never opened. They came to me shrink wrapped. So, so, it, just so if you think Tony is the stupidest guy in this group, he ain't. No. <laughs> you know, I mean. I was always a fan with comics. I like nostalgia. I really do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't know. You know what it is? My mother used to take me to the store. And I, I like to read, so I got into comics, and I just I went mm -hmm. into my own world. Like, I used to like to write things. Let me, can I ask you and a I question? Just, Ballpark figure? Yeah. How much money do you make on comic books every year? I would say conservatively, I can do forty, fifty thousand in sales, and that's easy. Yikes! And Alex, what? I'm not. Oh my God. And that's I'm in not sales. Even, and, I, and I'm not aggressively selling. Meaning, I have books that I won't even put up yet till I get older. Is that's that like net? Like no, no that, he, that's as gross. Oh, okay. I mean, I, I could do more than that. I mean, I mean, I just I don't want to. I don't really. I don't want to. I want to save certain certain books. I have so. I have a lot of books. It's, yeah. It's How much do they cost you? Like, do you make a good profit? Well, how much did, how much? Well, well, actually, I've been collecting since I was in 10, so I can tell you, like, some of my key books, like, say, Giant Size X-Men number one, I bought two copies of that. 
I bought that in the late eighties and I paid a hundred and a quarter and seventy five dollars. One of them graded at nine two CGC and another one graded in eight five. And eight five would get me three, four grand now on eBay. That's the eight five. Jeez I'm almighty. Nine, two, All of a sudden five, you sound five, like Tony Soprano or something. No, no, like, no, no, no. Respect for you. No, it's like, I, I'm mean, scared the I mean yeah, it's like, you know, yeah. I'm gay. <laughs> You know, every, sure every, you, everything you else about, uh, let me just say you? this, and I don't mean this as an insult, Tony, but everything else about Tony is stupid. But this, <laughs> this yeah, sure. is pure, yeah. utter fucking financial genius. Yeah. I got lucky with the comics because I always Then why don't you buy some goddamn new wallpaper? You can afford it. <laughs> <laughs> it would kill his mother if he changed it. I'm buying her, I'm buying her a couch tomorrow. Or well, Sunday. Right. Better put some she can't fucking see the bars on those anyway. windows. She's very thick headed. Me and my brother, we, we bought like we got the TV, you know, but she's very thick headed with the furniture. It's like just to have the bathroom done, we had to rip a hazard. Mom, we're gonna do the fucking bathroom. I got the guy doing the bricks now this the weekend, me and my brother. Because we're keeping everything up. She's very did the stubborn person in her who did the bathroom, Tony, pick out yeah. that wallpaper? No, it's actually all through the bathroom up here. There's no wallpaper in the bathroom. It's all mine. I, I think the only thing... Bars uh, on the uh, window, uh, right? I'll, I'll put a shot there of his whole thing there. Uh, the only thing worse than the wallpaper, I think, are the curtains. Yeah, the curtains are just... Like, she's got paneling in the other room. We were supposed to knock it. We yeah, do them. I like it. It looks good. No, it don't. I <laughs> thought she like was... I thought you said she's 21. blind now. How does she know what well, it looks uh, like? No, you know, she, she sees out of the one good eye... Okay, but I made the doctor say, listen, doc, for the hospital reasons, she's legally blind, so he put it in paperwork for New York, so we got the handicap stickers. One eye right mag, no? I mean, <laughs> I love her, but she's thick That Me and my brother's like, she'll rip her hair out. She like, you know what it is? Like, some of this furniture is her mother's, so she, she won't this throw is, it out. This is the I biggest mean, get... comedy act in the world, ladies and gentlemen. What is she this is, is comedy, like... this is a bright ray, it's comedy gold. This is awesome. I mean, I can I'm so happy you're recording this for yeah. posterity. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, I mean the best thing is like, when you went from like Tony Soprano on the comic books back to Norman Bates and then back hey, to Yeah, to threat to pay it for to play it for his mother uh, unless Tony gives you comics. But I had to tell you something. When I used to go to the comic shows, my brother would take me when I was small. Oh, God, I would go crazy. I had to buy every. I was grabbing everything. I got to have this. He says, you can't get everything. You're only going to get $30 worth. I said, all right. So I used to be there for hours, like a nut. I, I would go crazy for that stuff. You still play the numbers for your mother? Yeah, I actually played 613 tonight. That's her old license, but I wonder if it came out. But I'm. I, I, it hasn't come out all year. She, and then she has dreams and numbers now. I think We're you doing should start doing stand-up, Tony. Just tell this story. Just go up there. Yeah, You're five just minutes. Give it to somebody. Do it. I would. I'd rather hand it to somebody. Go have fun. No, with you it. do it. You know something. This is this is part uh, 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 inspiring. The fact that this guy here can make forty thousand, fifty thousand dollars a year off fucking comic books. Okay, uh, and and uh, and and at the same time, it's kind of creepy. You know, <laughs> it's, falling, Alex. it's like it's comedy and creepy. What what were you saying, Alex, Phil? If you saw my comics, you'd go, "Oh my God, he's crazy!" I got so much. Oh stuff. look, I know, I know, I know, Shecky. You've seen Shecky's place. You know what yeah, a collector he's, he is. I'm the same as him. Yeah, yeah. It's oh. like him with films as me with comics. Yeah. Uh, uh, what what did you say, Phil? Uh, you missed your calling. You know, instead of radio, you should have gone in the comic books. Yeah. yeah. You know what I was going to ask you, Alex? Did you ever make minimum wage in your life? I was always, you don't mind me asking that. Like, did you ever have a low paying job? Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah, worked. Gabnet. The worst job I ever had uh, was with a, uh, a florist. <laughs> this is true. Uh, I, I, you know, because when you're a kid, everybody says, oh, you got to get a job, get a weekend job. You know, my parents and the idea of working just I hated the idea of working. I don't like it either. And my <laughs> my feeling is I've never worked a day in my life almost because I went into radio and I've never felt like I was working. All right. Plain and simple. Right. So uh, uh, I um, uh, what, what, what was I saying? So but I work for this florist and. And, oh, and he, I, we'd take the flowers out to the funeral. 
and then we would after take them from the funeral home and take them out to the burial place. Okay? Uh -huh. So we did that. And then, you know what the next part of the job was? Take them to, to the wedding? No. Go back. Uh -huh. Get the flowers. <laughs> then they put them in water, spruced them up a little bit, and sold them off to a wedding. Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I was a fucking grave robber. The other, oh, the other job that I had that was minimum wage, Tony, was working for the Chinese Food Express. This was a place on 4th Street in San Rafael where people would call up and say, okay, I want some wontons and I want this and I want that. I like Chinese food. And then yeah. they, the guys who ran the place would give me the little bag. They'd have it stapled with the, with the little tab on it, you know, of uh, who's going to. And um, then... Uh, we would drive out and deliver the Chinese food. Of course, what we carried with us was our own staple gun. And we would open it up and take a couple of wontons out of it. And then Wasn't there it a, a, a again. Seinfeld thing where somebody... Oh, it was, it was Larry David. Yeah. Larry David said somebody was stealing his shrimp uh, on, on, the, uh, on the delivery. Well, they probably were. And the thing was, we didn't need to eat the wonton because... The Chinese Food Express fed us anything we wanted at the Chinese Food Express, but there was just something about stealing the food before we gave it to a customer that made us feel good because the job was so low paying. How's the food? It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, we were using our own cars. It was our own gas money, but in those days, gas was like 19 cents a gallon. Oh, my God. Yeah. I you know, you. I saw a Facebook post. Somebody posted in in, in uh, like Death Valley or somewhere that gas was nine forty nine a gallon uh, for a high test. Yeah. Well, what would happen back in the day? Almost and, uh, What would happen back in the day? And this was pretty good. Okay, was that th you'd have like two gas stations, one on one corner, one on the other corner. You know this, Jeff. You know where I'm going with this. And they would, and, and the companies that they were associated with, uh, Standard in one case, and Richfield was another we had out there, uh, they would suddenly have a price war. And I gas swear war, to you, yeah. I, bought, I yeah. bought gas for nine cents a gallon. All right? There were gas wars. Yeah. I'm going to go get you a photo that you'll remember. This, is, this was taken in Sausalito. Uh, I'll, let me go get it. He, he's going to go. He, Phil is now going. Uh, he's leaving Phil. the room. For those of you not watching the video, he's leaving the room to go get a photo, which is probably going to say nine cents on it or something like that. We lost Ray Renati? Did we? Really? Oh. I wonder yeah. Why, wonder why we lost. I think we may have lost him. He'll probably be back. I, I'll, I'll save his space. Okay. Um, let me see here. Uh, let's say eight. There we go. And he is number one, two, three, four, five, I think. Okay. Mohawk, yep. There he is. Okay. Do you and remember Mohawk Gasoline? Hmm? Yeah. There, there was one on Bridgeway in Sausalito that had been defunct for about 25, 30 years. Okay. And, Wait a minute. Hold, uh, this, this was the hold on a second. Let me, uh, let me go full screen on this so people can see this. It looks like an Indian. Mohawk, yeah, yes, Mohawk. Mo I remember Mohawk gasoline. Yep. Yeah, I, I took a picture of the uh, sticker on the pump, mm -hmm. and I have another one that I took the inside of the pump, uh, and uh, I developed these myself in my own dark room, and uh, printed them. Yeah, but, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Mohawk, uh, it was a definite brand. I don't think it was a subsidiary of anybody, was it? I don't think so either. Huh? Uh, but, uh, yeah, Mohawk Gasoline. Now, that was a California uh, thing. I, was gonna say, I don't remember that in Chicago. Yeah, no, it was California. What, what, yeah. what were some of the brands back in the days? It was Richfield was a big one. Phillips, Esso. Sinclair. Um, My dad was standard Esso. oil for over 40 years. Yeah. Your dad was a Chevron, right? Standard oh, oil. Then it turned into yeah. Chevron, yeah. Wow. They're out of Richmond. Yeah, yeah. That was where the big plant was. Still is. But. That was Rockefeller, right? Yeah, Standard well, Oil. Well, we 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 had Standard Oil in um, California. We didn't have Esso, and we didn't have Ex we didn't have Exxon or anything like that. But we had uh, uh, Esso stood for Standard Oil. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. They all had their little affiliates in there. 
Yeah, it wasn't E S. It wasn't S O. It was E S S O. Yeah, right? and it's Super Standard Oil. And out in the West Coast, it was Standard Oil. Uh, it wasn't Standard Oil in New Jersey. It was Standard Oil. So I, I, you know, yeah, really don't know. So anyway, well, I. I, I so we're talking about old gas, folks. <laughs> we all got a lot of it. <laughs> all got a lot of it, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me see here. Was there anything? So we got Theresa May. Did you see her crying? I felt so bad for her. Oh, she's got to leave uh, leave work on the seventh of June. Huh? She's yeah. uh, she's yeah. resigning as of the June seventh. Yeah, that's yeah. Uh, yeah, but she said she was going to hang till October or something, didn't she? No, I think that Boris guy is going to take over. That it's going to be somebody else from the Conservative Party. There's not going to be an election. Well, it, it, they're just replacing, uh, you know, who they yeah. already had. You know, there we go. Well, Ray's back again, or should be back again. Or do well, I she got to, elected or, right after they passed. Do Brexit I have to call him? And, Wait a minute, hold on a second. I'm trying to figure out if I have to call Ray. Uh, okay, let me call Ray Renati and get him back here. Um, uh, Anyway, um, here, yeah, there's Ray. Okay, I can, I can now put him back on. There we go. Of course, you, I, I, we figured you probably crashed is what, uh, what happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, but you're back. Okay, that's good. Uh, anyway, um, uh, yeah, she, uh, she, it was kind of, it was sad. She welled up and started to cry a little bit. And depending on who the newspaper was in... Uh, in in England uh, was depending on how they parsed her crying, you know. Uh, uh, Tony just pushed somebody down the stairs. <laughs> what was that noise? And Ray put her on ice. Yeah, Ray put her on ice. <laughs> exactly. Was that noise you, Ray, or is that uh, Tony still getting up off the floor? Oh, that was me going to the light, I think. You know, oh, we, we okay. don't we, we, we don't in this country because we're so self-absorbed. We don't uh, really pay a lot of attention to the whole Brexit thing and don't really totally understand it. But it really is something. I mean, it's it, it's going to it's going to hit the econ hurt the economy of, of Britain something big time. And it it again is a nation voting against its own best best interest. Um, to vote for they something like that so. and then not having... No, they don't feel that way, Phil. The, 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 if they were to hold another election today on the same question, Brexit would lose. You okay. know, it was so close, uh, they thought it was going to lose. But it was an extremely close vote. And, uh, you know, just like with the presidential election, when you have votes that are that close, there are those that lost and they're not happy about it and then those that won yeah but no, i think no, there was more to brexit than just uh financial it, uh, it had to do with their b open borders things like that yeah. but scotland and ireland are not joining uh the brexit but uh, yeah um it's it's but it, the thing is that it was a it was a proposition that nobody had a plan for after the election in other words they, they didn't come into the election with an idea of how they were going to handle the situation. Kind of like getting rid of Obamacare. No, 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 <laughs> no don't, don't, don't start. Well, no, it's, you know, they voted, they no. wanted to get rid of Obamacare, but they didn't have a plan. Yeah, well, that's a good example in that respect, yeah. But in, the, in, in this case, you've got an entire nation that once Brexit has been accomplished will have terrible things happening to it. I mean... Uh, they don't even know how people are going to cross borders, you know, uh, or how they're going to come into the country and leave the country, and, and how uh, goods and services. It's it's a mess. It's a fucking mess. I wonder if they're going to put up a wall. No. <laughs> yeah. They don't uh, need between one. Between Scotland, uh, Scotland and uh, no, they, they Northern don't, Ireland. They don't. Yeah. Regular Ireland. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's, 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 uh, it was kind of sad to watch today, you know. Uh, and and it's not like she didn't try, you know. Uh, yeah, she didn't try until it was too late. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, she sat on this for a long time, uh, hoping I think it would go away. Well, you know, you had John Major, 
who was the prime minister, who initiated this whole Brexit thing in the yeah. first place, and now he says he feels sorry that he ever he ever initiated it. Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's 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 pretty terrible what's happened with Brexit. You know, and then the other piece of news is is that. Um, our great negotiator probably hasn't negotiated anything with North Korea because North Korea is saying "fuck you." Basically, yeah. uh, uh, I think the Chinese are going to get involved in that one. Well, you, you don't know that. Uh, the point yeah. is that that they say that they feel that the United States wanted too much, and that they, that uh, the, there wasn't a spirit of of negotiation there. So, uh, you know. Uh, and then the, the who was it the the spokesperson in North Korea called Joe Biden stupid and dumb. I mean, he's taking a book out of the out of the Trump playbook I, because first he, time I've seen them be right. No, <laughs> because they called him a dictator. He called him a dictator, and oh, so they okay. said, well, he's just stupid and he's a. I can't remember what it, I wish I had the story here immediately. I'd I'd read it to you, but. It was yeah. pretty funny. But anyway, it looks like we have no deal with... The, he said... It, what they said was the whole thing fell apart in Hanoi is where it fell apart. Did yeah, they, they, they walked out. Uh, yeah. Trump walked out and said we don't have a deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and and uh, so it, it, uh, it, it's, not, uh, it's not good. It's not good. Um, so that's another place been laying us down. And now what's happening with a lot of these states that have... Uh, uh, have gone with this abortion thing, uh, you have uh, courts knocking them down. Mississippi. Mississippi. The court there said you can't do it because we've got a national law, and it's called Roe versus Wade, and you can't do this. It's, it, it, you know, there's a law against it. All right? Federal. A federal law. You can't just make a law that flies in the face of a law that already exists and um, so what were they thinking of doing? Oh, yeah, the, uh, now in the states where there is, where they've made up these, you know, anti-abortion laws, people are thinking of holding an election, a referendum on that law to make, get the law out of there. I mean, it's how just a mess. Those, how about those states that say you can have an abortion up to the last moments of, uh, of uh, carrying the baby? You know, uh, is is there? Uh, does that go against the federal law? Like, uh, no, you know, no, not at all. Roe versus Wade firmly. Well, uh, let's go to uh, let's let's go to the, the, our expert, yeah. uh, Josh Wheeler. Josh, Roe versus Wade. What is it? But what does it basically say? It says a woman has the right to decide, right? Yeah, I think the underlying concept, you know, kind of ran toward that, you know right to privacy you know the expectation of privacy and a lot of the language you know really from what i remember kind of left a lot of it up to the states in terms of their restrictions on abortion as long as the restrictions didn't you know i think place some kind of an unreasonable burden if you will you know on on the woman and so that's typically, I think, what, you know, gets argued is, for instance, some of the laws that are pretty, you know, what, you know, draconian is the word people use sometimes are, you know, considered to be like an unreasonable restriction on the, the woman's right or and or her right to privacy, you know, such as, you know, laws that would say, you know, she has to, you know, inform the stated father or whatever, you know, those kinds of things. And that's where they run into trouble, I think, with the, you know, with the Roe v. Wade issue is that. But and the, but that's why they want to push it to the court, because they're basically, I don't know if they want to overturn Roe v. Wade. I mean, I'm sure, you know, that that would be fine. But I think what they're probably hoping for is more like a redefinition, you know, of Roe v. Wade, because it did leave most of the uh, discretion, I think, is probably the word you used, you know, to the states. So therefore, if they could get like a, a more aggressive redefinition of it in their favor, they could basically just pass laws like they did, which would make abortion, you know, technically not illegal, but yet so impossible to get 
that it is, you know, quasi illegal, right? Or, you know, basically. So, I mean, I think that's where it goes, which is why, to answer Phil's question, the rules um, about, you know, late term abortion um, are uh, basically, you know, don't fly in the face of it. And I, and I mean, in, in, in no offense to him, but I'm just saying. At times, he makes it sound like the woman can be there on the table about to have the baby, and the doctor's down there, and the legs are up in the air, and she can just be like, oh, no, 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 fuck it, I changed my mind. And he'll pull the baby out and fucking stab it with a fork, and they throw well, it in the That's what they're saying that's about New York and, and Well, that, no, that's what they're saying about New York, but I don't think it's exactly how the New York law right. is. I mean, we should just be careful making it sound like that i mean now, Josh, that, that, that kind of argument is the kind of argument that i heard as a little child in church so that you know they could make it sound like you know there were these women and doctors that basically just got pregnant because they hate babies so much they just love killing them you know like i'm gonna have another baby so we can bash its fucking head in as soon as and i have I, it and i think the new york, my fucking mind you know I, i'm not i'm not sure exactly what the new york law states but i do believe it is not as permissive as you make it phil what you're doing is you're simply relying on the uh, the talking points from that side. Uh, the fact you know, is, you got to rely on something. Uh, the I'm fact not is, part I, I think a lot of it has to do with if there's the health of the mother, uh, any number of, of things. That uh, the, the decision can be made up to birth, but it, it's it's not likely. All right, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, and they were also saying if. The baby, if they try to abort it and it came out live, that they could still kill it. No, 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 no absolutely that has not. Never been the case. Well, this is what the talking heads. No, are that saying. no, that's what your talking heads are saying. That's not oh, what the lying. what the law is. Yeah, hey, I wanted to ask Josh a question because I can't remember this anymore. You know, it's memory. Uh, can uh, can is it that the states can't pass a law that's more restrictive than the federal, or is it the federal can't uh, enforce a law when the state is more restrictive? Well, with any law, the states states cannot pass, you know, states can't have legislation that basically takes from you a federally guaranteed right, okay. you know, which is why, you know, the state, so the of state Georgia can't be can't, more restrictive than the federal government. Right, yeah, I mean, you know, the state of Georgia can't inst reinstitute slavery, for example, because, you know, uh, that freedom is guaranteed in various different forms in the, you know, 13th, 14th, 15th, you know, the slavery, you know, you know, they can't, they can't do anything, you know, like that. If it's guaranteed to you by the federal government, um, you know, abortion or, million, you know, lots of other rights, you know. No and, and, and Roe versus Wade guaranteed you the right. To an yeah, abortion, yes. to make a decision, as a woman, to make a decision for yourself. Yeah, so within certain that, parameters. Yeah. How did that, not that I'm going down this path, to, uh, but how did that affect the Second Amendment? Because the Second Amendment is a, is a federal right. Well, you can't use a gun in an abortion. No, no, but I'm just asking how, uh, based on the restrictions between states and federal, uh, mm -hmm. how, how they're able to justify that one. Well, it's, it's, it's pretty similar to, you know, the, the current question, and that states are allowed to have, you know, reasonable restrictions, but can't take away your right. So, in other words, you know, I'm trying to think of a good way to explain it. You know, there's a line, okay, and what's the line? Well, it's defined by certain courts, and states can go right up to that line, mm. but can't cross it. Oh, and so you can own it. But, go, yeah. Some states choose to go right up to the line, and other states choose to stay, you know, way back here. You know, so you know, but as long as they don't go over it, it it's cool. Okay, and, but let me let me ask moves, let me let right? me let me ask you this, Josh, with uh, uh, a law like uh, 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 Roe versus Wade, uh, the states can decide what will be allowed in their state or do they all have to agree that a woman has a right to choose they have to facilitate that but they can place limits on it in their state yeah i mean i think that they all have to uh, adhere to i don't know if they have to agree but they have to adhere to you know the idea that the woman does have the right to choose but they can place limitations on that right up into you know just like gun rights for example 
yeah. you know, right up into that. So the overturning of Roe, basically, you know, it has always been my understanding, is not going to ban uh, a woman's right to choose or abortion, you know, um, completely. It, it's not as if Roe so gets overturned and no one in America can get, can get an abortion again. It basically just means that many states will have a lot more freedom to restrict them, but not all states will, as we know. You know. Now, how, and now, let me ask you this: though. Like how, how, how do how do you feel? Yeah, no. How do you feel the, uh, for instance, in Alabama, the eight week rule will hold that's up the, in all of this? That's the heartbeat, right? Well, I mean, well, it's the, not really the it, heart. It's not. It, it, you, you, it, it's not they say heart. you get a heartbeat at eight weeks. No, it's not no, a heart. It's no, it's not a heart. Vibration of cells that make a pulsing electrical. Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's right, true. But, I mean, you can no, say yeah, yeah. Yeah, but what my my question is. How would that? It's how, not how, pumping how, any blood, so it's not a heart. No, it's not. Yeah. I mean, I don't care if it is or not. Just not. So how would that, though, uh, uh, Josh, uh, work with uh, with Roe versus Wade? Can they re- can they say eight weeks, and does that still make them? Uh, twenty four uh, weeks is what Roe v. Wade said. Roe v. Wade said 24 weeks? Yes. He said there can't be any restrictions. I mean, there can be restrictions, but you cannot take away a woman's right to choose up to 24 weeks. Okay. So to yeah, kill I'm, the I'm not, is viable outside the womb. Or in okay, the I'm not sure months. if that is the exact verbiage or not. Um, but, yeah, to, I guess to Alex's question, though, that that's kind of, you know, what they're trying to do. I think some of the argument is, well, you know, the technology has changed. You know, this decision, you know. Obviously, in the mid '70s, we did not have quite the ability to detect, you know, these things as we do now. So, you know, that's that's what I mean. They're look, they're not necessarily looking for an overturn. They're looking for a change in the definition, or they're looking to move the line, right? You know, so that the line moves so far forward that it's close enough to a ban that. You know, it's virtually a ban. You know, I mean, basically, I mean, they're almost looking to do with abortion. You know, let's be fair. What some people on the left might be looking to do to guns. Well, hey, let's not let's not overturn the Second Amendment, but let's let's put a tax on bullets so that every bullet. Yeah, costs but 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 when you say when, when, when you something. say to a woman eight weeks, okay, mm-hmm. when you say to a woman eight weeks. Uh, some women don't even realize or know they're pregnant at eight weeks. Sure. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and Ohio, I, I'm pretty sure Governor, uh, the new governor, DeWine, just signed this, mm-hmm. I don't know, three or four weeks. Well, I'm sorry, maybe eight or ten weeks ago. It was right after, you know, it was basically one of the first things he did in office yeah. was they passed that heartbeat bill here in Ohio. And I believe here in Ohio it's, it's about six weeks that they're allowed to force yeah. you to undergo a test to determine if they can hear it yet. And Ohio's is one of the ones that's probably going to get wrapped up in a lot of these other ultra-aggressive bills and yeah. try to make its way uh, to the court. Ray has his hand up. Ray? Yeah, I, I found a um, the majority decision here, uh, the exact wording, it's pretty short, um, if you want to hear it. Sure. Are you interested? Okay, yeah. in a 7-2 to two decision, the court held that a woman's right to an abortion was protected by her right to privacy under the 14th Amendment. The decision allowed a woman to decide whether to keep or abort the fetus slash unborn child during the first trimester. This affected the laws of 46 states. Justice Harry Blackman wrote the majority opinion. We acknowledge our awareness of the sensitive and emotional nature of, of the abortion controversy, of the vigorous opposing views, even among physicians, and of the deep and seemingly absolute convictions that the subject inspires. So that was the majority decision. Okay. Yeah. So, so it, first it, trimester. It's oh, first yeah. trimester. Still, you know, and I, first. And, and that's basically like a synopsis of the decision. I mean, yeah. No, I know, full, I know. Right. Yeah. Oh, I know. I'm, yeah, I'm not saying that you didn't. I just yeah. mean. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of language in it, but that's the general overview of it. So, I mean, you know, late term abortion is almost like a separate animal, um, you know. And, and look, that one kind of crosses party lines, too, because, I mean, it's no secret my political affiliations and everything. But, hey, look, I mean, I'm not against, uh, you know, abortion. But I gotta admit, it makes me feel kind of icky, you know. I mean, I, I have some some issues with, you know, 
some issues with it. And hey, look, I'm not in favor of yanking a baby out and, and hey, killing. Look, I mean, look, I, you know, I, I, I don't think I don't think that any of us are. You know, right. I think that in my own personal case, if I had a woman get pregnant, uh, I would uh, I would urge her to have the kid. If she yeah. wanted to, however, not have the kid, that's her decision to make. I'm I'm not giving birth to that child. I right. think as a as the father, the potential father, I should have some some kind of communication in the matter. But I don't think that uh, that the ultimate decision is mine. Uh, but in my case, I would not want it to happen. <clears throat> I would not be happy if it did. But nevertheless. Uh, that doesn't mean that I'm going to deny somebody else to make that decision for themselves. Just like I wouldn't deny the woman I was involved with not to make the decision. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and, and it's just important to remember that we can't put people, you know, or ideas, you know, in boxes. I mean, if you put me in a box, you know, the liberal box or whatever, you know, but like I said, I have some issues with, you know, abortion, especially late term, you know, middle to late term. I mean, mm -hmm. that just gives me, that's a creepy thing to me. And that's just like, you know, I'm for some, some well, gun issues, but, here, but here, I'm not for rounding here, them up. Here, here's you know? my feeling about late term abortion is that I've always kind of been of the feeling that if you haven't decided by the third trimester, sure. you know, then uh, I don't know if at that point you have a right anymore. You had that right for the longest time, and you didn't take advantage of it. Why did you just suddenly decide at the end of, say, the third trimester to get an abortion? Uh, that's, you know, that's a little, that's a little hinky. Can't they test? You know, they, you have sex. It's unprotected. Uh, you know, you, you might in a week go down to the drugstore, pick up one of those things, pee on it, and see if you're pregnant. You know, right. you well, but, but, but Phil, sense. Phil, Phil, there's also the argument that somebody should have the right to have some time to consider the matter as to whether they want to have an abortion or not. And, you know, six or eight weeks is not enough time. Well, I would agree with you that I wouldn't say six weeks because some people at six weeks are still in a state of denial as to whether they're pregnant or not. But I would yeah. say, you know, at, at when you when you get into eight weeks, when you get into the end of the first trimester, if you haven't made a decision by then, I, then are you going to make a decision at all is my question. But still, still, I will stand by a woman's right at any point to make that decision. Yes, Ray. Charlie was first. Oh, oh Charlie was first? Oh, okay, Charlie. Yeah, about late-term abortions, there is no woman in the history of the world that carried a pregnancy for six months and then, and just blithely decided, I changed my mind, we're gonna kill the baby. Nobody goes through six months of pregnancy, throwing up, carrying all this extra weight and everything, and then decides, they only do that if they want the baby. Every late term abortion was a baby that was wanted. And the only reason they don't have the baby is because either the baby's gonna die anyway, or it's gonna kill the mother in childbirth. Yeah, about that time, a doctor knows whether the child might be deformed or have some kind of health problems or whatever. So that, that's why I think, for instance, they allow it as late as they do in New York, is for those reasons. But that's you're right. There's a lot of counseling involved in yeah. that situation too. Yeah. I mean, people inter intervene at that point. Yeah. It's a, it's a complicated issue. I mean, you know, I mean, that's just like, you know, Phil was talking about the pregnancy test and everything. And But uh, 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 the six-week thing is a little odd because, I mean, you know, look, I'm not a doctor. That's pretty clear. And, and I'm not a woman, and I wish we had one on here. But, you know, just in my own marriage, I mean, you know, there have been these, you know, questions about whether or not my wife was or wasn't. And, I mean... Some of the birth control pills that women take make their periods and things so irregular. Yeah. They might not have one for six weeks or two months. And my wife's like, oh, my God, I think I'm pregnant. And But this test is negative and then another one. And then five days later, she gets it. I mean, it, it it's women's body. I mean, they're a fucking mess. You know what I'm saying? Uh, 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 six weeks. Is, yeah. The woman's only two weeks late on her period in six weeks. That's all six weeks means. Right. It's no, been but six you had sex. Last period. You had sex. You you don't. It was unprotected, and uh, you're not on the pill. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
you know, you don't you you want to find out if you're pregnant, you piss on that little stick and it turns you know, poo things. And... But but they're incredible. Uh, the there's no 100 I percent mean. birth control. There are people that have protection and it fails. Yeah, well, that shit happens. It, it, but not and as you know, there there are some people. There's some people who have already have two, three kids and don't want another one. You know, you have to take that into yep. consideration. Uh, there are the health reasons. The fact is, for instance, in Alabama, uh, it's against the law, even in the cases of rape and incest. Okay? And in what one other state, and I can't remember which one, a doctor can get 99 years in jail for in giving Alabama. an abortion. You, you know why Alabama and Mississippi don't have it against incest and, 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 and rape? Well, because they wouldn't have a population without it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That, <laughs> okay. Bada boom. <laughs> you know, everybody is the other one's cousin. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, you know when to get something funny? Yes. My Tom. oldest friend, they're really like Italian, like real Italian. Well, and how are you really Italian? Funny. You're either Italian or you're not Italian. Well, they're like the ones like from Italy, like they don't really conform to America. Alex, they name their first kid. They name their first kid if it's a boy after the grandfather. So if the grandfather's I'm name named was after John, my they say hey, John, and all the boys and the first son has to be named John. The one time we went to the guy the house for the birthday party, the lady said John. Four of the kids fucking stood up. I mean, you all have to well, have the same name. It's what stupid. about what's his name's kids that are all named George, the the yeah, fighter? So what's his name? Yeah. George Yeah, yeah. It's like it's crazy. I thought it was funny. But they like the real Genzus. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you know, in Italy, uh, if you are an American and you have Italian blood in you, you're automatically an Italian citizen. Did you know yeah, that? I can become a citizen just like Israel. Time I want. What? I can, I can become a citizen of Italy, and I can become a citizen of England after five years. Well, you can become an in, in, in under the EU if you become a uh, an Italian. Um, um, Citizen, because of your because of your heritage, because the, the Italians think, believe in you having nationality by blood, okay, right. as opposed to here where it's you know, who was your father? Were you born here? Uh, uh, are you an anchor baby? Whatever you know. Uh, so by that nature, because they're part of the EU, you are also a citizen of all those other countries. Yeah, well. I have a friend that's Irish, and his grandfather was Irish, and there was a time period that he could get the passport, he could get it for his kids. I think that period has passed. Well, uh, I can tell you, Phil, that in England right now, I can yeah. get full citizenship and voting rights and everything if I just go. Because my grandmother is from Leeds, one of my grandmothers. The rest were from Italy. Uh, and if I stay there for five years... And do on a visa, I can become yeah. a complete. Englishman. Well, you know, Alex and I could become <laughs> citizens of Israel. It's something called the right yes. of return. Yeah, right. And, uh, I started to look into it, but uh, I, I didn't do anything. We about. wish you'd go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got Skype in Israel. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't work any better here. Yeah, there'd be no Pete. It probably does. What I love is this show I was telling you about called uh, "What We Do in the Shadows." And in the last episode, uh, they, they had one of the vampires in this trial uh, come, uh, signing in on Skype. And it kept going out on them, and it kept glitching. And, 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 and he was like a couple of minutes behind. And, and, and then they're saying, move your, your Skype closer to the router. <laughs> you know? And that probably was ad-libbed. Um, yeah, yeah. So, anyway. Oh, just uh, on your Brexit thing, it was Boris Johnson, and Boris yes. Johnson is yeah. going to take over, and he says that uh, as of October, it'll be deal or no deal, they're leaving. Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, Patrick. Mm -hmm. and if you take a look at Boris Johnson, I saw him on television, he yeah. is an English version of Bernie Sanders. The guy had no combing ability with his hair. <laughs> just, yeah, just visually, he is not a liberal. Yeah. I got him. He's wearing a helmet. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, and you should see Boris's Johnson. So, uh, uh, no, he was the mayor of London, and he's really a real asshole. Uh, I thought the mayor of London was a uh, Arab. Or no, Muslim. he was the mayor. Of, listen to me. Was the mayor of. Uh, and um, 
Uh, I, he's well, a, when they had the Olympics there, he was mayor. Well, uh, 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 Theresa May was a conservative, was she not? Yes. Yes. And so is Johnson. Yeah. So whoever's going to take over has to be a conservative until the next election, and then it's uh, yeah. it's a free for all. It's anybody's. Yeah. It's anybody's. And you know, the British are like us; they'll vote for the wrong person. It's just uh, it's, it's a rite of passage. But uh, I pray for the British. Can the people. monarchy run for office? No. No. No, they they don't need to. They own the fucking place. I know, but you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, they may say, "Hey, look, we've been around for two thousand years, and you, or a thousand years, and you guys are are fucking the dog here, and so we're gonna we're gonna run and take over." Well, they are. You know, they the uh, prime minister has a meeting once a week, usually with the queen, mm -hmm. uh, and and she gives her opinion on what she thinks about things. But they don't enter into the po body politic of the country at all. They don't put their two cents worth in as uh, as to who they want to see win or whatever. That, uh, you know, oh, they're just happy to have all the property they own, you know. <laughs> yeah. And the jewels. Which is not insignificant, yeah. I might add, you know. Yeah, Patrick's up. Yes, Patrick. But I believe the monarchy talks shit about our uh, government, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the, uh, uh, our, our president's going to have lunch with the queen, you know. Mm. Yeah. I wonder who's going to leave the tip. It was late last time. Remember that? <laughs> was he? Late? He kept walking in front of her last time. Oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, he kept yeah. cutting her off. Yeah, he. Well, I would have too. Oh, bitch! Come on, keep up. God, She's not how that much younger? You know what's amazing is how old she is. What is she? Ninety-three, something like that. Ninety-two. Uh, yeah, her husband's and her husband's about two years older than she is. I thought he was. Is he ninety-nine? No, he's not 99. I, I know they took away his driver's license. Well, it was about time, yeah. you know. I thought they had the centennial for queen, for the queen mother she, when she was 100. No, 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 no. That was a centennial for something else. But they, they she's, she's, God, I think she's, to begin with, she's the longest living, serving, yeah. serving queen ever. Up till now, it was Victoria. Um mm -hmm. That was her grandmother or mother? Uh, no. Uh, I, I can't remember what the relationship was. Do you realize that when we had, uh, when, when we had World War, what was it, World War I? Uh, what was it? All the, okay, at one point when Victoria was queen, she was queen in England. Another relative was the head of Germany, was the Kaiser. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. another relative was the Tsar of Russia. I mean, all these, all these yeah. people were related to each other. Now, wait a minute. There, there was a king, and he abdicated to marry a, an American yeah. woman yeah. that was a divorcee. Yeah. And yeah. that's when uh, she became queen, right? No. Uh -oh. No. That was 19. No, her father became queen, a king. Yeah. The king. Her father oh. became oh, king, okay. and uh, uh, then when he died, she became queen. Okay, so it was when... So the uncle abdicated, then the father took over, and then she got the yeah. spot. And the and uncle then that. went to kind of work on the side of the Nazis. Did you know about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 No. Oh, it was, it was horrible. It was really it was pretty terrible all the way around. But anyway, that's that. Hey, are you Jeff know something? Jeff put his hand up for a second. What? You got time. Jeff had put his Jeff, hand up. Jeff, you have your hand up? I, I kind of remember that uh, 1964 that would be 63 or 53 that, uh, that the queen became queen. Yeah, it was, I think it was 53, something Three. like that. Hey, listen, there's the theme. Uh, and uh, it's been a good show tonight. It's been really good. Yeah. I've had a nice time, and Albert never showed up for some reason. I don't know. He may still be out still getting Still at the party. Drunk. He's probably still He's out still getting drunk. Party. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, I really want to thank you all for having joined me tonight and uh, thank you to Josh and thank you to Charlie and thank you to Phil and thank you Kevin and Ray and Tony and Jeff and Patrick and I didn't stall once on anybody ladies and gentlemen they're going to give a big wave goodbye and I will wave back at them okay there we go there they go uh, wow 
Well, that was a good citizen panel. You know, if I had to point to something and say, that's what a citizen panel is, that's what it would look like, okay? Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it. We're out of here for tonight. Or in fact, we're out of here for the week. We'll be back again Tuesday. Uh, Damian Chaplin is on at uh, 9.30 with the uh, Eastern Daylight Time with the exchange. And then we'll be back again at uh, 10 o'clock uh, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye.